Hello everyone, it's Marnie. So today I'm going to be doing my TBR for the end of April and the start of May. So to recap on, I did say I was going to read all the books from my scavenger hunt book tag. At the moment I have finished Gemini and The Sinner as well as The White Fox and I'm still reading The Northern Lights and Skullduggery Pleasant. So once I've finished um, Scabber Diary Pleasant and The Northern Lights, these are the books I'm going to be moving on to and I'm going to be saying them in order of what I'm going to be moving on to because I've actually got them in order of when they either need to be returned to the library or, well, I've got my friend's ones at the bottom because I can return them once I'm done. So the first one is Fated by Benedict Jacker and... The synopsis for that is Camden, North London, a tangled junction of train lines, roads and the canal where minor celebrities hang out with minor criminals and terrorists and moody teenagers mingle. In the heart of Camden, where rail meets road meets ley line, you'll find the Arcana Emporium run by one Alex Verus. He won't sell you a wand or mix you a potion, but if you know what you're looking for, he might just be able to help. That's if he's not too busy avoiding his would-be apprentice, foiling the dark, outwitting the light, and investigating a mysterious relic that has just turned up in British Museum. So, it's rather interesting. It's about magic and light, and it's like a new book to my library, and I borrowed it a month ago, so I kind of need to read it because it's almost due back there. I've just been too busy with other books. Ooh, it's got a review from my favourite author. Apparently by Patricia Briggs, a stay up all night read. This sounds really interesting. So yeah, this is the next book I'll be moving on to after I've finished the last two books from the Scavenger Hunt book tag. The next book also needs to go back around the same time as Fated, which is Layla by Nikki Kelly. So, yet again, another one that my library's only just gotten in this year. So the synopsis is, the girl knows she's different. She doesn't age, she has no family, she has visions of a past life, but no clear clues as to who she is or where she's from. But there is a face in her dreams, a light that breaks through the darkness, and she knows his name is Gabriel. On her way home from work, she encounters an injured stranger whose name is Jonah. Soon she will understand that Jonah belongs to the generation of vampires that serve darker forces. Jonah and the few like him are fighting with are fighting with help from an unlikely ally, a rogue angel named Gabriel. In the crossfire between good and evil, love and hate, and life and death, the girl learns her name, Layla. But when the lines between black and white begin to blur, where is the spectrum she will find her place, and with whom? Sorry, I kind of got interested in with, uh, got distracted with the don't miss the next book in the saga. And it's a picture of Gabriel. So, yeah, I kind of got a bit distracted. I really should just focus on where I'm reading. Right, so the next book I've taken photos of and put up on Insta and all that, because like I said, I got these books a month ago and I just haven't gotten around to reading them. That's one I look forward to because I haven't read it yet. And I loved reading these books when I was younger from VC Andrews and this one's called The Silhouette Girl and like I said it's another one my library's gotten in and I've had for too long so the synopsis is who's to say her life isn't perfect Pura Dunning has everything she ever wanted a, su a successful boyfriend a thriving nursing career a truly comfortable life but then the strange voicemails start left by a woman named Scarlita Scarlita she knows to she seems to know Prue, although Prue neither knows nor knew any Scalita, nor does she recognise the glamorous voice leaving her poisonous messages. Is this the work of a jealous is this the work of jealous revenge from someone at the hospital, an old enemy she has forgotten about? Prue fine first tries to ignore these Lord threatening messages, although she is shocked hearing details about her life that no stranger could possibly know and anyone who heard them might suspect that she is something other than an innocent victim. Each unknown woman she encounters feels like a threat. She especially wants to keep this secret from her boyfriend, but when she suddenly becomes a person of interest in a murder case, she can 
keep her she can keep her stalker and the things her stalker says secret no longer and that would prove fatal so I'm very interested because I do love VC Andrews books even though I recently found out she apparently passed away before I was born and all of her books since she passed away have been written by a ghostwriter which is something I didn't know beforehand but I do now and I felt really really bad because I did love her books and I was reading them as a um, teenager and all and I didn't know the author had passed along. So the next book, I have to fold a piece of paper over because there's names put on this book for who gets to read it after me. So the next book is Everless by Sarah Holland and all the synopsis says is Blood is money, time is power, desire is treachery. Welcome to Everless. Um, I got this book in because I originally bought the second book from um, Kmart and it didn't have written anywhere that it was the second book, which is Evermore. And then when I opened up the first page, that's when it stated it was the second book in a series and I hadn't read the first book, so I had to go out and borrow the first book so then I can read my copy of the second book. I'm sorry. So the next book is one I look forward to. I've read from this author before and enjoyed her books. Um, my library actually got this book in on the day that it was released into um, bookstores and all that. So the moment I saw it, because I walked in on that day, I had to grab it and um, yeah. It's further in my list because like I said, I actually have to return those books. So this is The Boy Who Steals Houses, The Girl Who Steals His Heart by C.G. Drews. So the synopsis for this is, boys like him don't get the girl, they go to jail. Betrayed and abused by everyone who should have taken care of them, Sam and his brother are lost souls. They have wild, hopeless, precious dreams to make a home for themselves. Then Sam meets a girl whose laugh is a burst of star stardust. But betrayed people have the hardest fists and Sam has a secret that is about to catch up with him. I know this heart's going to break, I'm sorry, I know this book's going to break my heart. The first book I read from her, A Thousand Perfect Notes, broke my heart. Um, just because of what it was about and how touching it is. So I can see this doing the same. So, I, even though I am looking forward to it, I also know it's probably going to be one of those books that really, really kills me. And I'm hoping that I don't read it when I'm having one of my depression moments. But, yeah, it's on the list so I can return it to the library and then someone else can enjoy it because I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy it. Alright, so the next book is one that's raved about everywhere on YouTube and Instagram and everywhere but being who I am I always get the books late and I've got this one late too and I'm looking forward to reading it but at the same time I'm scared that it's not going to live up to what everyone's saying. Like You can go on and say whatever but I've got a, like, a lot of books tend to not live up to what people say about them and I'm hoping this one does because everyone's praising it and it does sound rather intriguing which is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. I did read um, Life Like and I enjoyed it. I thought it was brilliant and amazing and it's going to be one of the books I talk about in my catch up because of, I've only read it recently. So I have read some books from this author. I've also read the Illuminae Files where he co-authors with Amy Kaufman and I enjoy that too. Even though it's not the style I generally read, I still enjoyed it. So I'm hoping I enjoy this. Like I said, everyone's praised it and loved it and I'm, I want to love it. So the synopsis for this book is Destined to Destroy Empires, Mia Kover, Korver is only 10 years old when she is given her first lesson in death. Six years later, the child raised in shadows takes her first step towards keeping the promise she made on the day that she lost everything. But the chance to strike against such powerful enemies will be fleeting. So if she is to have her revenge, Mia must, be, Mia must become a weapon without equal. She must prove herself against the deadliest of friends and enemies and survive the tutelage of murders lies and demons at the heart of, of a murder cult. The Red Church is no ordinary school, but Mia is no ordinary student. The shadows love her and they drink her fear. 
So it sounds really interesting. I'm hoping to love it as much as everyone else does, and then I might move on in the series. And I'll definitely be moving on in the Lifelike series to Deviate when it comes out, because I really enjoyed it. And I have plans on buying my own copy of Lifelike too, because I enjoyed it. So the next book is Given to the Sea by... Sorry, library stickers are covering it. Um, Mindy McGuinness. So, this is another one that has the synopsis on the inside. So, the synopsis is... Kosa was born to be fed to the sea to prevent the kind of wave that once destroyed the kingdom of style. She can't be sacrificed until she produces an heir, but human touch repulses her, except for the touch of the injury. Dara and Donelia, Doniel, are the last of the injury, a native race with magic that seduces a force of nature, but dwindling since the Patera slaughtered their people. Wit leads the Patera, the fierce warriors who are now marching on the kingdom of steel. The stone shores of Wit's kingdom harbour a secret threat, and to ensure the survival of his people, he's prepared to conquer every speck of steel soil. Vincent stands to inherit the throne of steel, but has no wife to share it with. When the beautiful and mysterious Keho Kosoa arrives without an heir, Vincent knows that his father will stop at nothing to make sure she fulfills her duty. Torn between protecting the kingdom and protecting the girl whose fate is tied to its very existence, Vincent's loyalty is soon at odds with his heart. While royal scheme Petrina March and the Indy struggle to survive, the rising sea calls for its given and Kosa is destined to answer. So it's rather interesting. By sound of it, it goes on the point of view of more than one character, which would be good. I've actually had this on my TBR in Goodreads for, I think, two years now? I think. And I've had it there for a very long time. Alright, so the next book is a book my friend gave me to read um, because she thought I'd be interested in it. I was interested in one of the other books she gave me to read, which is in the scavenger hunt one and that was the sinner that was actually rather intriguing but like i said i'll go into it more when i do my review on how my scavenger hunt book read went so this book is shadow woman by linda howard so the synopsis is lizetti henry wakes up one morning and doesn't recognize the reflection staring back at her in the mirror she isn't suffering from amnesia she remembers who she is what she did the day before, her parents, where she grew up, everything. But who she is, is not who she sees. Pardon, sorry. Alarmed, she begins searching her house for something, anything, that will match what she remembers. There is nothing. And yet there is nothing in her life that seems abnormal except herself. She could be crazy, but her instincts are telling her this isn't the case. Some women might make an appointment with a psychiatrist... But Zetti isn't some women. Deep inside, she knows she isn't the face in the mirror and that she has to find out the truth before it's too late. So, really intriguing. Um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to grasp this book. It sounds, it sounds like it could go one way, but then it could go another too, which is really interesting. And the last book I'm going to be reading is... Remembering the Mail Creek Massacres. So it's edited by Jane Linden and Lindell Ryan. So this is um, based on a true story. And its synopsis is... The 1938 Mail Creek Massacre is remembered for the brutality of the crime committed by white settlers against innocent Aboriginal men, women and children but also because 11 of the 12 assassins were arrested and brought to trial. Amid the tremendous controversy, seven were hanged. Mail Creek was not the last time the colonial administration sought to apply the law equally to Aboriginal people and settlers, but it was the last time perpetrators of a massacre were convicted and hanged. Marking the 180th anniversary of the massacre, this book brings together leading writers, historians, artists to explore the significance of one of the most horrifying events of Australian colonialism. 
Throughout the fearful, thoughtful and fearful, it challenges us to look at our history without flinching as an act of remembrance and reconciliation. So, it's going to be interesting to read. I like, I like reading books about Australian history. Doesn't matter whether they're like dark or not, but I like to read how things came and all that. Like I like history books on other places as well as my um, fiction books too. So that's all the books that I've got for the end of April and the start of May. And if you liked this video and want to see more, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this and goodbye.